our um, invitation tonight is going to be provided by Ryan Coleman. Bow our heads, please. Father God, thank you for gathering us today to, to do the business of the uh, city of Silicaga. I pray that everything we do, say, and think may glorify you. And then we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Ryan. You may as well stay up. You're up first. Okay. <laughs> All right, so the first thing on our work session agenda tonight is discussion that's necessary by difference architecture. Ryan told me to amend the Silicaga Recreation and Aquatic Center to include additional design services for the city of Silicaga. Oh, when this will pull, we develop it. So, is this, can y'all hear me? Yes. So, this really, from a bottom line standpoint, doesn't really affect y'all in terms of design fees, because the reality is, is you've given the um, Parks and Recreation a certain amount of money to do, a, to do this work. And the redevelopment of the old municipal pool is coming out of that number. So, you're, you were already, planning on paying fees based on this number. So all this is gonna be doing is adding that scope of work to the design contract so that they can start it. It's gonna have two different schedules. We've talked about this before. The, the redevelopment on 21, that's a nine month design process. What you're talking about doing on the old municipal pool site is, is a lot shorter. So we're treating it as two different projects under the same design contract. Um, the only caveat is, is just like the state fee schedule, when projects um, grow in budget, then the fee percentage, the design fee percentage shrinks. When the, when the project, let's say it's a million dollars, well, that's, you're gonna have a higher fee percentage on a million dollar project than you are a $28 million project. So while I'll say you accounted for it, there is gonna be a little bit of difference, but not a lot of difference. It's gonna be changed in comparison to what we talked about before. So what I sent Alex is a, a, a resolution basically for you guys to add that to our to our scope of work so we can get started on it for you. Cost of that, we, we, we're not there yet. I mean, the reality is, is you want to redevelop it and do it, and we're going to do it for the most economical possible way we can. And But I can't sit here and tell you how much eight courts plus a basketball court plus demolition of the building plus filling in the pool, all the stuff that you're talking about, we don't have a number. Yeah. When do you think we would run? During the schematic design, we would target in the first month, get putting you a budget together for it. Okay. So you can talk about if it meets your needs, if it needs to be cut back or added to, that, that whole the whole thing. But since we plan to do our own demolition, we could go ahead and start with that, yeah. right? Or do you want to conserve part of that? Yeah, well, we talked about, so the city of Silicaga is going to self-perform some things. Um, one thing that we talked about is demoing the building itself. And then, you can also subcontract out some of the work as long as it doesn't exceed a certain number. So maybe even filling in the pool and demoing the building is part of something you'll be talking about. Um, and then if you were to fill in the pool, we've talked about providing some specs because that'll be a pretty technical process. Who the city has talked about negotiating that work with is more than capable of doing that type of work. They're the best around. I, that's who I would call. So if you choose to go that direction, I feel comfortable that you, you'll be able to do it the right way. So Steve, do you have anything to add? I, have a, I do have a couple of questions. I was gonna ask Ryan, so once we do this tonight, what does that um, time frame look like? So I know you said within the first month, you would know like yeah. the cost, so. We, we should be able to get you in a good ball. And, and what's important about that is, is it affects your other project. You give the Parks and Rec this much money, so it's imperative that we find out how much the first project costs because it may impact the programming of your bigger project. So we'll jump on that ASAP. That'll be the first thing we kind of talk about in the initial kickoff meeting for that is um, how can we keep that cost down enough to and, and still do it the right way. You want to, don't want to do it halfway, but also save enough for the big project that you guys have been talking about for longer. So Steve, so you know I'm always trying to see what a time frame is. I'm, I'm all about, you know, see where we are and when, what's the end game. So so after tonight, what does that time frame look like? That first meeting and... So the first meeting, Mel set that up. Um, the only thing we're really waiting on is the specs for filling the pool. Um, as you know, we've talked to Reed and they want to do, they said they'll demo the building for us, but we want to fill the pool in first. Uh, we're going to have heavy machinery moving around this big gaping hole in the ground. 
So once we get the specs for how they want it filled and packed and the lifts and all that stuff, then we'll start writing up the scope of work and try to get that process started to get the path clear for them to start building on. Okay, that makes sense. So how long do you think it'll take to get those specs? Or are we already waiting for them? Or are y'all just waiting on us to they're, get this? They're waiting on it. Um, what I would say too is the recommendation from the design team, Michael Rice was on the phone call or on the email thread is to hire a geotech geotechnical engineer to make to to administer or to look at that work because the reality is is like they're going to fill in that pool and, and it's called lifts but think about it every six or eight inches and you're going to compact then fill compact because you don't want any if you're putting a playing service like a tennis court or a pickleball court any imperfection under it will show in the surface so that's got to be done correct so it will, you'll be hiring a geotechnical engineer to manage that because the city self-performing that, not an architect, not an engineer, you guys and your qualified team will be looking at that and will help in there, but the geotech will be giving that data to the city. And the time frame, I can help answer that. It's probably a three to, three to four month max time to get bid drawings out. And then you got a month of bid um, and then award the contract, and then they should be mobilized sometime in the spring doing that work. Okay, that's what I was looking for. That's <laughs> on that's on the pickle that's on the pickleball basketball court stuff, not on the twenty one stuff. So any of this uh, that we had the, the guy come in that did the special assessment on the ground and took the core samples and all that. None of that correlates to what you're talking not about. Not really, because Ashton he was he was investigating whether or not there were sinkholes. Okay. You know, um, so it's a different level of what you're asking them. This guy's going to stay with it from start to finish. Yeah, he's going to probably come and test like every time that it gets lifted or maybe every couple of times the lift happens, he'll actually come in and do a compaction <laughs> test okay. to make sure it's meeting a spec. Gotcha. So it's not a one time test, he'll be with it throughout. The That's right. And that is some cost that we, you'll incur some cost there from somebody that you weren't expecting, but it's not much. I have one more question. So you did say that this project would affect the bigger project yeah. as far as price, but what about as far as the timeline? Would that push our timeline back? The only, as far as the only thing that would affect the timeline is if we end up finding out this costs an astronomical amount of money and we have to go back to the bigger project and pull it way back. Um, because, you know, if you got $28 million, and let's, I'm not saying this is what it's going to cost, but let's pretend it costs $2 million and you had 28 set for something else and you don't have to find two million dollars out of that project to pull out so you're not going to be able to do any design stuff on that one no we can't we're going to move forward okay. because i uh, mean the good thing is, is we're working on both of them simultaneously so we, sh we should be able to help you predict a little bit um but you know when we get the bids back on it this, we're in the middle of construction documents for that project we may have to pull back on finishes or something we may have to find something to compensate okay. for the fact that you just spent more money than you thought you did. Okay, but that's what I was worried about, just that, that timeline as far as design and getting everything else to do. It's not really, uh, it shouldn't affect unless something crazy happens. It shouldn't affect the two timelines are kind of independent from each other. We just need this information to fully do this information. So okay. I, it shouldn't affect the timeline too much. All right, well, thank you so much, Ryan. Do you guys have any more questions for Ryan? I, I don't have to run, but I, got, I do have a question. Where would we pull the money from? When it's time to make that this project, yeah, yeah. for the, the uh, project he's speaking of. That would be a question for council. We yeah. don't know how much we're going to pull. We haven't discussed where we're going to pull it from. I got you. So that that'll come as we know how much it is, depending on. That's correct. Okay, fine. Thanks. You got something more? No, I'm sure. Gotcha. Any more questions? All right. Well, thank you so much, um, Brian. We look forward to um, hearing what the next steps are after tonight. All right, so number two, discussion that is necessary by Lauren Layton to look how the Parks and Recreation Special Event Coordinator license applications regarding special events in various locations for fiscal year 25 and to waive the $50 business license. Hey, Lauren. Hey. We're just basically coming here um, our annual ask to present various events at various locations that um, we manage and um, we try to 
make it easy on you and just ask one time once a year if we can and then if something else comes up then obviously we'll, we'll come back to the drawing board and ask you for permission to do so and so this is for all special events right yes and i submitted separate applications for each type of event so this is for food truck friday and um, fall festival for next year so we plan from this october through next october great you know, we're excited i think my kids really enjoy the food truck friday and i think the little freedom i give them out there too though <laughs> it's a good yeah. space to run Number three, discussion that is necessary to set a public hearing relating to nuisance abatement for rezoning 3209 and 3211 Talladega Highway from MX2 dash limited excuse district to B2 dash general business district and property located on Culling Road owned by Josh Taylor from AG2 dash general agriculture district to RT 1-0 lot line residential district for November 7, 2024. And we're just- um, It's not for nuisance abatement. It's uh, just for rezoning of those properties. You remember from the plan? Ah, uh, yes. <coughs> right, and we're just setting that public hearing, right? Good. All right, y'all have any questions on that? <coughs> okay, number four, discussion that is necessary about Corporal Angela Tate to apply for Alzheimer's Foundation of American Project Lifesaver International Grants. There is no match for this grant. Hey, Angela, how are you tonight? I'm all right, how are you all? Good. Um, I'm here asking, I've taken over the Project Lifesaver program, and what it is, it's, uh, I have paperwork that I sent with it, the packet we all to see. It's the bracelets that we do um, for, children or adults, it doesn't matter what age it is, with cognitive disorders that wander and stuff. And they have a bracelet that has a frequent radio frequency that we can use in antenna and be able to locate them a lot faster. Was that part of, I know I did Citizens Police Academy. I think I learned about that when I did that a couple of years ago. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so I went and got the instructor certification and everything, so we'll get a lot more people certified. What I'm asking is to be able to apply for grants um, so that we can be able to fund it through them and donations and sponsors and stuff. And the people that need these, these bracelets are provided to them at no cost to these people, at right? Time, yes. You can charge them a month, but we don't. So. That's cool. Do we have to have a membership to the Alzheimer's Foundation to apply for the grant? Not by that I know of, and it's a, uh, you don't have to match the fund or anything. Okay. Uh, the only thing that we do is we go through ALEA. Mm -hmm. They have sponsored us, is basically what it is, and I went to the conference just last awesome. month and everything for Project Lifesaver. Any more questions for I'm good, thanks for taking Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, number five, discussion that is necessary about interim police chief Brandon Hill to regarding rescinding resolution number 30-2020 authorizing summonses in lieu of arrest in accordance with the fourth supplement state of emergency, emergency proclamation issued by Governor Kate Ivey on March 26, 2020. Hello, how are hey. you tonight? How are you I'm doing? Good. Uh, what that entails is back when COVID first hit, the metro jail shut down so we couldn't take anybody to jail. So we issued a summons on based upon our emergency proclamation. So this is just the recent. Okay. You guys have any questions on this? Okay, we're going back, I mean, I know we're going back to take them to jail, so is this just something that is basically marking through the paperwork saying we no longer have that? That's correct. Um, to where we're not taking them to jail? That's, well, that's correct, just to get it off the books, because we are taking them to jail. Right. Just crossing our T's and down the That's correct. Well, you can just stay at the podium. I think the next few items are yours. Okay, discussion that is necessary by interim police chief on deal use regarding block safety camera agreement for the Silicon Police Department totaling $69,500. Again, I'm asking y'all to give uh, the mayor permission to sign a contract. I have already previously uh, explained to you what they were, and like I said, we need them here. They have Katero Prime. And was this a part of our capital um, list? Yeah, yes, the fact that, that you guys come back and just let That's us know right. when you were ready. Okay, any questions on the flop cameras, guys? Okay. Was this, you were gonna, you were gonna phase them at one point and buy them two separate times, but with this capital purchase item, is it all at once? What I did was, I was gonna buy the first initial 10, and I was able to get 11 for the price of 10 by a little haggering. Uh, 
to you from you guys, and then we apply for a grant for ten more. Gotcha. Okay. Okay, Have you already applied for the grant? Yes. You gave us permission to do that. Okay. All right, and thanks for letting us know that you be haggling with us. We appreciate it. I haggle with really everybody. <laughs> All right, the next item is yours as well. Discussion that is necessary by Interim Police Chief Rondell Hughes regarding the uniform replacement due to damages. Okay, the, the um, humidifier has been fixed. We have not moved back into the room yet initially, and I, I don't know if you still have it with you, but it essentially came down to $14,000 for needs, $46,000 and some change to replace all. And we just had, we just needed to decide what we wanted to do. Yes, sir. So yeah, guys, I don't know if you guys remember that um, list. It was written out, it was the things that were damaged. Um, due to the water damage downstairs, like you said, the humidifier is fixed. Of course, we have to get the necessities. Yeah, that's the 14,000, but to replace everything that was lost, it was 40, 40. 46. Um, we just need to get the necessities. Yeah, and that's what I think. So I think we need to buy yeah. the necessities, and then maybe we can just plan to just um, stock back up as needed. That's right. Or you run into a bind or something, like everybody else, just have to come and say, hey, I gotta have some more or something. Good enough. All right. Are you guys on board with just getting the? Um, just the necessities. And what's that total? Is the do we have to put that in? Out? Is that on here for tonight or next time? No, ma'am. That's on. Um, yeah. with the blank. To fill in a dollar in amount. Okay, so you'll have to. Um, $14,500. $4.20. This item's in your $25,000. You can also adjust that. I said $25,000 or $9,000. $25,000. Okay, and then what was the other so I just have to make sure I read this one. Okay, the next one is yours. Oh, any more questions on this? Are we good with number seven? Okay, number eight. Discussion by Interim Police Chief Rondell Mews to declare, to declare one block model 17 firearm as surplus property to present to retiring officers as a token of the city of Silicon's appreciation for their faithful service. Resolution number 136-2024. Officer Chris Wapow retired September 27th, so we would like to present his gun and his badge to him as been previously done historically. Okay, and this is just a common practice, and I think this is something that we would like to do. Do you guys agree? Yes. Okay. All right, so number nine is yours as well. Discussion that is necessary by any police chief, Ron Dill, to purchase four. 2024 Ford F-150 Super Cruise 4x4s totaling $370,829.08 funding from capital. And like I said previously, when we discussed this, this is what um, we'll, what we need to get our take-home program into effect. Now, did each of did each of you see the letters I placed in front of you before? I, I got this F-150. Did you, did you, were you able to look at that? Yeah. Okay. I was able to get these trucks at a huge discount. The reason I was able to get them because I had a uh, 50 or 24 trucks where everybody's trying to get 25 cents. So the regular price of an Explorer is around $49,000. I was able to get these trucks for 40 cents. Okay. So Two main reasons. Than Explorer, cheaper than the ones you got. Cheaper than what I got. And uh, cost effective on gas. Also, it gives more room in the back for transport. Now, um, I have an itemized list, I showed it to you last time, of everything that goes in one. When I outfit one of these vehicles, anybody, no matter what you're going to get in it, in room, it's not for outfitted just for one person. And this includes the battery device. It includes the battery device. And you will be glad to know they have been installed in the other ones. Ah. Beginning today no island because you one more thing so how long can you leave it off again two hours but you said that these four are going to cost three seven that's with everything that's getting it um uh, 800 radios is fourteen thousand dollars government direct in car cameras is fifty nine thousand dollars pinnacle tablet computers is fifteen thousand dollars stock for radar units is fifteen thousand dollars bed covers for the bags from the shop $2,400, window tent, $800, stock decks, $2,400, graphics, 
$3,600. Uh, install graphics, $1,100. Faults in the back, guns, weapons, all that, $6,000. The trucks themselves, $187,000. And to put lights on all four, $62,000. Man, that gets you all the back end. Yeah. The accessories, that's more than a truck. Out of curiosity, how are these branded, labeled? Is it stealth or off or loud? No, you can see them. We, I got rid of the ghost package. You'll be able to see it during the day, and at night it still glows. As a matter of fact, I changed the, uh, I changed the design. And if you have you seen an SRO truck? Yeah. Do you like it? Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I, I do thought, too. Was that crazy, or was it not wrapped differently? Did it change when it went to get lights on and stuff? The SRO truck? Right. Actually, the SRO truck doesn't have enough lights, so I'm going back to fix that. Well, I mean, wasn't it wrapped? But uh, it's. Out of Bayside Graphics, out of uh, um, Foley, Alabama, and it, it is wrapped. But once it's, it I guess it's more crazy because I thought I saw it and it was wrapped like blue, like had neat designs on the side. I guess I'm you might need some new contact. Yeah. The light might have heated differently. <laughs> but so far, I've had nothing but uh, from the citizens of Silicon. They look the way it looks, yeah. and and it says from Marble City. That's who we are. That's right. I got a couple. Um, I got a question. A couple questions. Is this also a part of our capital um, that has already been approved? Yes and no. Okay. Um, it is part of the package um, for capital that you all approved. However, the price, which he did state when we talked about capital, was only three hundred ten thousand. But he did tell you guys when we were doing this that the quotes were expiring and the prices were going to go up because we are in a new fiscal. So it's a difference of $60,000. For the same equipment, the prices just went up like eggs and milk. What, what, is our, um, what is our balance in capital? After all of this, uh, it is going to be <coughs> $1,000,000. Okay, so um, is that, after, when you say all of this, after the police cars or after everything you do tonight? Everything that you approved at um, budget. Okay, so, so everything. So this has been approved except $60,000. The price difference. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, there, so that's what we have to decide if we're okay with What made it go up 60? The quote expired. Okay. I also got a question. Um, the this is an abatement card. It's like an unmarked card. I, um, and this is just me alone, one person. I just feel some type of way about that card not being marked. Well, I it, think for safety reasons, shouldn't it um, say, you know, Silicon Police and this is an abatement when they're going out on site? Well, um, it, it's kind of like our Black Explorers administrative cards. They're not marked either. The only difference is this, this truck is white and not black. It has public safety equipment on it. Uh, matter of fact, Officer Coleman, during when we had the school threats, stopped five or six cars at Pinecrest School. Even on, they expect to see a white Dodge truck with the lights going on. I know it, but with, I guess when I think about this is an abatement, it is, you know, sometimes it can be kind of dangerous, and that's the whole reason why we have a police officer to enforce it. But shouldn't that car, like, say what it is? Like, say who he is when he's pulling up to a scene? That ain't a bad, that, that, I see what you're saying. That ain't a bad idea, you know, strike them like the others. Yeah, but, and, and then even if it says this is an abatement, and I'm just saying, you know, Listen, I, could, so I could be wrong. If that's what you want, that's what we'll do. Well, it's, it's just me. I don't know. But how, much is it, how much would it be just to do with it? Everything else is on there. It's just the striking it means. Yeah, yeah, just basically. put nooses on it. On that side, you go. Yeah. I could do that. Well, we still need to know how, how much it is. Yeah, I mean, every, everybody can I have to get the quote. And we can talk about it. Next council, they council. Okay, yeah. So, what about the sixty thousand? Are we good with? Um, because we've already approved everything except the sixty thousand because of the price change. That's a lot, but yeah, I guess. And then it still leaves us with the balance of what you said. So. That's right. All right. Okay. Number ten. I think that's it for you. Um, Thank you. Thank you so much. So, last item of the work session is a discussion that is necessary by City Clerk Treasurer Alexandria Lambert regarding adjusting the compensation for the city prosecuting attorney, public defender, and part-time presiding municipal judge for the municipal court. And this is something we went over in budget time, remember guys? 
So we've already um, talked about this and agreed to this. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you have any more questions. I did, just so you know, I did send all the resolutions to Judge Thor last week before the um, Rita has went out. He made minor changes, but he was fine with it. Um, he just asked me to let y'all know that we did coordinate um, last week. Okay. We so, had the final in our supporting documents. That's yes. the final one. Yep. Yes, sir. That's correct. All right, so any questions on anything else as far as the work session agenda? All right, so I'll go over the um, the things that are going to be considered for tonight. So we have um, action that is necessary um, to approve an automobile allowance for the fire chief. We got action to approve purchasing procedures and rescinding or um, purchasing policy. Are we going to discuss number one? Um, I'd like to. I would too. Okay, well that's fine. You want me to stop right here? No, go ahead and read all three. Yeah, you can read all three. Yeah, we can discuss it. Okay. All right, so on number three, action that is necessary to approve resolution for the um, the compensation for the municipal court. Public defender, action that is necessary to um, approve resolution for Coosa Valley Medical Center. We already talked about that. So action that is um, necessary to approve resolution adjusting compensation amount for the um, public defender again. This is one of those things we already talked about during budget. Action that is necessary to approve adjust compensation for Matt West, prosecuting attorney. Action that is necessary to adjust compensation for um, court judge Taylor Farr. Action that is necessary to approve the rezoning. And this one is to, um, yeah, for the public hearing. I'm trying not to read all of it, so I'm trying to skim through it. Hopefully, y'all, unless y'all want me to read all of it. Action that is necessary um, to set another um, public hearing. Action that is necessary to approve, it says, uniform guidelines for the city of Silicaga. Action that is necessary to approve or authorize summons in lieu of arrest. The resolution we need to rescind that was due to COVID. Action that is necessary to um, approve a contract for engineering services as far as the new aquatic center and the old pool site, action that is necessary to approve um, a surplus property for um, the police officer who was hired handgun, action that is necessary to approve, approve the police department to buy the new trucks, action that is necessary to approve police department to apply for the Alzheimer's Foundation um, grant, action that is necessary to approve the police department to replace uniforms due to damages, and we're going to do the fourteen thousand five hundred four dollars, right? Right. Yes. All right. Action that is necessary to approve and authorize the mayor to sign the block um, safety camera agreement. Action that is necessary to. Uh, so this is an action that is necessary to um, take home vehicles to include all of the following positions. And I'll go ahead and read this when I read this whole thing. Action that is necessary to authorize the use of take home vehicles to include only the following positions, police chief, police captain, police lieutenants, police investigator, K-9 unit, school resource officer, street superintendent, assistant street superintendent, and shop superintendent, effective October 1. And I guess this is part of the thing that we're gonna discuss. And action that is necessary to accept mayor's um, rec mayor Hodges recommendation to appoint a new police chief action that is necessary to approve park and Rec's recreation host of um various events for fiscal year 25. Yeah. all right so morning, go first please um, yeah so number one uh we're sending the ordinance and giving you know chief osgood the the money the 250. um I think he'll tell you as well that's not as important as having a vehicle. I'm not saying he take off a command vehicle every time, but a vehicle that allows him to respond and come back with lights to you know run code or whatever back when he's needed, when he's off, when he's out of town, when he's home, to come back to Silicon when he's needed. I think if you look down here, we just gave everybody all these positions the ability to take home a vehicle, but we're taking away the ones that are already in the fire department. That just that doesn't seem fair to me as him being the chief. He was hired under that pretense that he gets the vehicle to take home and we chose, you know, after but negotiation that's, that's we, we chose. He wasn't hired under that pretense. I just want to put that in. Yes, but we fixed when we gave him the option and he took away the two fifty and chose to take the car and we all agreed to it. I just 
me personally don't feel like taking that back. I think he deserves to have a car to take home. Again, it can be a different car, but he still needs a take home vehicle. And I also want to follow that up about the fire inspector who came by yeah. twice last week for fires and he, he needs a vehicle as well. I feel like we're playing favorites and we're, we're taking away from people who need some type of, you know, way to get back. I think it's putting the city at risk for potential, you know, litigation if they're in an accident trying to respond and they don't have the proper lighting and stuff in their personal vehicles as well. I, I think that there is a, just a big issue with this overall. I mean, also, then you look at the court department, Amber John, she's not mentioned anywhere in here, and she has to travel back and forth to the jail to do domestic violence hearings and then um i mean it, it's not fair and then you take away building and codes vehicle as well like i just don't understand it and these people too are working to and from work they're stopping and doing jobs i know like mike mentioned to us before he's stopping before he gets to city hall and after he leaves city hall for the day and uh, you know he's, he's stopping in i mean it's, it's something that's needed and we're taking away. It's like we're punishing them when they've been doing a great job. And we're killing morale and we're, you know, it kind of puts departments against each other as well. I mean, it, it's just not a good book and it's not fair to them. We want to have the best departments providing services to our citizens. And I think that we're just, we're killing morale completely by taking away. In my, my opinion, you just strike number one and add on 18, add the inspector, <coughs> my, uh, the building service, and fire chief back to the list of positions. Here, is it my turn? Yeah. Here's my opinion. You know, I love Nate. Nate's, Nate's a good boy. We all know where Nate lives. Okay, Nate drives 96 miles a day. That's 20,000 miles a year. That's five oil changes he's had. I was the swing boat, if we remember, when we bought this vehicle, because I was told by me and Mayor Highland had had a conversation prior to that that he was going to drive something else. But the way the world is right now, the way that gas and oil and things have um, increased, I think it's more cost efficient that we leave <coughs> the agenda as is because Nate's not the only one that uh, his vehicle would be um, would be need repaired. I mean, we're just have to buy. Mr. Mike, a uh, vehicle also, and, and a lot of that is not because Mike lives a long way away, but Mike uses his a lot, and Mike needs a new vehicle. He drives, I think he lives 11, 12 hours. But me personally, and, and nobody in this room is going to want to hear this, and, and I'm not being ugly, I'm really not. I'm old Silicon because I was raised by a bunch of old Silicon people. If you're going to be a department head, I think you ought to live in Silicon. Now, I know we probably wouldn't get a lot of department heads if we did that, but that's just my personal opinion. I think we leave the agenda as written because at this time in our, where we are with budgets and where we are as a council, I think this is most cost efficient for the city if we leave it the way it is. What about the investigator driving back to Etowah County? How is that fair to point out Nate Osgood's I, I, Miss Heath, I don't think it's a uh, point now, uh, Nate. Well, but I don't think anybody's got anything against Nate. But I'm saying, if you use that problem of the mileage, you got to look at the picture as a whole. Well, you can't when, just single one department out. You got to look at everybody that's driving. I'm trying to respond thing. to your question. And I'm not finished talking, and you're talking over me. No, I appreciate I'm order. Okay. All right, guys. So everybody has said how they feel. Do you have anything? Okay. I don't have anything to add. So everybody said everything they wanted to say, right? And if we're on the subject of um, stipend or whatever you want to call it, the 250, I think that needs to be adjusted as well. Those are very old numbers. Yes. 250 for allowance or whatever you want to call it is minuscule now. I think that that's that's not fair. And what about again? We have a Amber Johns. Nothing was addressed about her being a department head that has to travel. Amber is, we've already addressed that Amber's doing the budget. Amber's getting mileage. But just from City Hall to the courthouse, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
That's what she's always no, got. She, she anytime she does city business. She has to do city business. That was already addressed during the Okay, that. I just want to make sure we stick with that. Adjusting the allowance would make sense. Yeah, I, now I don't mind adjusting the allowance. But are we going to adjust it for everyone, or would you, how are we going to do this? Or who's the only one here? But what about the fire inspector who has to come back every time there's a fire? I thought he only, like when the, he could get in the house, he went to inspect it. Yeah, you know, so Alex, I think all fires. I think we can, <coughs> we can agree about adjusting the amount. So how would we, how would we come up with the fix? Um, we would have to discuss the amount in the work session. Who's getting it? Who's not? I don't think we need to do it off the cuff and here. As far as so just putting the next, we could do an inflation based adjustment. And then just come up with the number. I believe the 250. <coughs> Tiffany's got that. So when when would he get it? Want to make sure he gets the total amount. When does he get it? Because I think they also tax that too, right? Yes, it is taxed. Um, on one hundred and sixty-seven dollars, it's a change, um, and he gets it after the fact. So it's the second pay period. Okay. And that'll be um that'll be after our next meeting. Um we have an effective date on this agenda. I know, but he still it'll still we can still get it in October though. But still get the are we talking about the two fifty? Yeah. That's yes. what we're talking about adjustment. Yes. So we have another meeting to we do we have another meeting on October seventeenth. But you guys will have to discuss the amount as a whole. Can we call him on we can call you on the phone? Because you won't be here the seventeenth of October, will you? I mean it's fine, we'll just discuss it with here. I mean I think we wanna make sure we get a fair amount. Okay. Increase. Well where do we want to take it to? She needs to take the uh operating apply inflation adjustments and see what's what she comes up with. Did you hear that, Alex? Yes, sir. What about ins the inspector? Nate, what? Uh, I'd like to make a call it on the fire inspector. I mean, obviously, y'all are, are going to do what you're going to do with the fire chief ordeal, but the, the fire inspector is also our fire investigator. He, he, he wears two hats, and that's what his job description is. Mm -hmm. and, and so all of the same justifications for a police investigator who's on call taking a vehicle also apply to him. And, and as Laura mentioned, just last week, we had fires where he had to come back after hours to do investigations, mm. after hour investigations. So regardless of what you're gonna do with me, he needs to be considered to be placed on the list of eligible positions because he he, he does do that. Okay, I, I don't think we understood that fully, Nathan. <clears throat> so we're also, so there's also a couple of people in the police department that are losing their cars. Do you want to talk about those as well? Who's losing their cars in the PD? Um, the the nuisance abatement and uh, the train yeah. Are you good with those? You just want to talk about the fire department? I mean, I think that I don't think it's fair that y'all are taking any vehicles, to be honest with you. But I think that they deserve them as well. I mean, we can't say it you know about the mileage with one and not look at mileage for everybody we, but we also we also don't pay people to come to work people more I but mean, it helps we don't pay retain. people to come to work yes we do and then as far as building services i mean we might head over that you know i'm not trying to put anybody's name on but they're they have a department head they make their schedule they know how and when they're gonna have to have the things that they have to do so you have to take enough time to come to work so you can get in the city vehicle and then go on site. Can I say something for my sometimes hot, hot, we have to come hold on. Hold on. So hold on, Harmony. Harmony. And I know you don't understand a lot But of Harmony, I'm around. speaking he got to stand up to But he acts and we allow it. But I'm I'm talking. Well, I'm telling you. But I'm I'm talking. So that's one aspect that he's Harmony, I'm gonna ask if you can't speak in turn then you'll have to leave. Yeah. 
Matter of fact, we will recognize her later. I appreciate it. I will. I don't mind recognizing you. anybody, but I would like to be respected <clears throat> when I am speaking. I want to make sure everybody's <clears throat> recognized and everybody gets a chance to speak when it's time to speak, if that's okay there. Okay. That's good. Harmony. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what I was saying is they they make their schedule. How, how far does he even live away? You're saying we consider mileage. When people have to come to work, and that's just like me, I know I have to go to work. If I have something to do at work that's gonna start a little bit early, I have to get up earlier so I can be in work in time to make it to the site. We shouldn't be letting everybody take cars home because it's convenient. That's not what the cars are for. They're to do city's business, not to make everybody's you know lives convenient. Well, on that aspect too, <coughs> Tiffany, like he mentioned, I think we got the point with the fire investigator, but with Nate, he's not coming out. He's not coming here just to come here. He's coming here after hours for an emergency, to run code or whatever the case may be. He's when he's called, to show up. So that that's another reason why he needs a take home. All right, Harvey, you want to get up and say what you were saying now? So we obviously don't know ahead of time if, uh, with, with, within a reasonable time, we know they're going to be pouring concrete, right? We don't know when these businesses or these residents are getting these money to do these things. Just like we don't know when fires are happening. We don't know when investigations need to be done. So we can't plan ahead, okay, well, I'm going to have to leave at 4 30 in next week because there's going to be a fire. So you're saying that in. Not with building services, I don't. I don't with building services. So okay. you're gonna have to you're gonna have to elaborate a little bit more. So with building services, it's really, really hot outside, right? Uh huh. Concrete sets up different ways depending on the Okay. Sometimes we're gonna have to come in at five o'clock in the morning. I don't know that until we get to I know, but we're talking about building services, though. To me, that doesn't make any sense, though. Concrete is part of building services. I know, right? concrete is part of building services, but you're saying if some sun is out that day, we're going to pour concrete, but shouldn't we already be at work that day to where we can get in the car and drive to the site? In the we should have known that. I just I just find that, I don't know, I don't work in building services. I just find that hard to believe. Yeah. Okay. So, do we have any more questions? On this. I just think it's a bad idea. And it's putting departments against each other and it's but how is it putting departments against each other? That's what I'm not understanding. Because that the but part, if the council decides to do something, you can't blame you can't blame employees for what the council decided. But to it's do. still it's just gonna kill morale. I, I just think it's a bad idea. So where are we taking I guess number um, on the agenda, the list of people. Number, number eight, 18. 18. Mm -hmm. um, so this is just authorizing who can take a home. Everybody else that used to take a home no longer takes a home. Yes. Yeah, so that's how we're. Good. And as far as the fire inspector, if they, and they, you said he does have to respond each time there's a fire. fire. So that. Anytime there's a fire, he has to be on scene right then. That's what you're saying. In, in the immediate aftermath, anytime there's a significant fire that requires a cause and origin investigation, he responds back to do that. He's, he has all the certifications to do cause, fire cause and origin investigations to determine where it started, what started it, why it started, if it was said intentionally or if it was accidental, all of those factors that go into that aspect of our job that can't necessarily wait until the next day because that type of um, that type of uh, man, like evidence. evidence can can deteriorate or go away if it's not examined and looked at and investigated right then in the immediate aftermath of the fire. I got you. Thanks, Nate. Did you add that? I did. Okay. Just make sure I'm doing that. I can, I can get on board with that. Mm -hmm. Just not the um, command center. 
Now that is. Well, and on natural disasters, yes, but like these floodings and the bad weather we've been having and all that, you, you've got to have your street and shop superintendent on site. They're pretty much on call 24 7. They've got to come in and out. Yeah, they're supposed to be in here. So does the chief have to be coming in. He needs to be in when there's a big flood, when there's his men out there. Somebody has to come in and run the station if they're out running calls 24-7. Sometimes has to come in well, help out there. And all I know, well, hopefully with them being so far away, hopefully we have a team in place that helps have already been there and can assist We hired us. him, but y'all hired him knowing he lived where he lives. I don't understand why it's an issue in, five years later. Or, but in the ordinance, it does say we hired him saying that he would not get a take home vehicle. He would get the $250 a month. I have that in front but of me. But we're not like, consistent. We take like it. it. We take it, we give, and then we take away. It's so inconsistent. Amen. <clears throat> but again, like Lee was saying, and Ashley mentioned now, I, I could get on board with the car with some lights, but that not the command center. I feel that. Yeah, but not, yeah. The command center, it was hired for, it was it was purchased to serve the city of Silicaga. It needs to be in town to, so it can be used for the city of Silicaga. We still, if we go that route, we still need to add fire chief under the number 18 to have a take home. But not, we're not, not a brand new vehicle and not the command center. That's what I'm saying. That, that's fine, but if it's a take home vehicle, it's number 18 if you add his name. It doesn't specify which kind. He said, yeah. He's saying add, add it to the PBS. That's what I was going to say. I don't think that's what the PBS is saying. Well, that's what I was going to say. 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 Me. They're trying to get your attention. Uh, Y'all keep talking about the command vehicle. I, I'm a captain here. I'm not using his vehicle. That is not made for me. That is can, made for him. But he can use it when he's here. I understand that. But he may be at home or somewhere else in a meeting and he can come back in and he needs that command vehicle. Okay. That is not for me to use. I have everything I need in my truck that I have. And he can operate that command center from wherever he is. And, and I don't understand this either. The, there's admins and stuff in the PD. There's admins in the PD. Okay, Harmony, that, that's your last time. That's that's your last time being disrespectful. I'm listening to him. But that's, that's your last time being disrespectful to me. I mean, I, I sit up here, I try to respect everybody. I try to give everybody a chance to talk. You know, y'all... I think what it is on Scott. Sorry, Nate. On Scott's point is, it doesn't matter if that vehicle's sitting here. The, the personnel, correct me if I'm wrong. The personnel are assigned to specific vehicles in, in a group, so it wouldn't be used okay. if it's sitting. There. Ashton, we understand that. So let me say this: we understand that. I understand what Scott's saying. I understand what you're saying. But understand what we're saying. With the numbers that we have, is not cost of effective for that vehicle to go 100 miles every day. So we're here to compromise. So we can get on board with him driving another vehicle or we can give him the stipend. So which one, that, that's what we're going to decide. So we're either going to go through with number one and give him an allowance or we can get on board with him driving another car that has lights on it. I think that's fair. You are we going to do the others that are driving? I, that's, I think that's fair. That's, I, I that's, 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 what you, right. that's what you come up with taking something home that's got lights so he can run cold home. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, I can get on board with that. I can get on board with either one of them. Can you get on board with that, Laura? I can, but I still think that we should put the same, you know, in place for anybody else that's driving further than a certain mileage. Is that, are we going to, are we going to, are we going to agree to take, Give them a car with the lights and stuff on it, just yeah. not the command center. Sure. Or we're going to give them the um, go along with number one. I, I like to. Ashton. We, we got to scratch number one. We, we got to scout them. Yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly. And we need like, mm -hmm. to have a way of determining in number 18 for each of these positions what kind of cars you can have quite as authorized. Exactly. That will require further discussion. That'll be fine. And I think that we're still. You know the building and code department. I think we need to reconsider that as well. So should we take it off until we specify the type of vehicles they're taking home? Yeah. I don't think. Now, obviously, there's only one type in the police department, but others have to specify. 
I don't think we need to take it off. I think we're in agreement that he will need to take a car home so that he can respond to emergencies, but the command vehicle will stay in some body. Yep. I still trying to find it on the agenda, guys. It's number 25, and I can see what's off. And we did, and Nate, we did add the fire inspector. You hear me, Nate? We did add the fire inspector. December 26. Yeah, 26. All right. So let me write it here. So do I need to write something specific? I need to So. So you want to put a yeah, we need to go through each. What are we going to do when it comes time, though, for the police to take home vehicles as a department, as most departments in the area do? Are we going to allow that? Because, I mean, I know that Rondell's been trying to build a fleet to eventually offer that. Yeah, they they have, have to have a take-home policy first. We'll, have well to I mean, I know that, that, but are we, I mean, is that out of the picture now, yeah. or is that still no. well, a possibility in the future? It's still, anything's a possibility. They will have to put a take home vehicle policy in place. There's not a one in place right now. So once that gets put in place and it's presented to the council, we'll deal with that then. All right, so we got this done. So we're not gonna do number one, right? And we got the stuff added to number 26. I still don't think it's fair we're giving the city clerk a Stopping and not at least the other. That's, um, uh, isn't that like state law or something? Um, I couldn't Alex? find it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, so is there anything else on the work session agenda? Can we go over the wording of whatever y'all change since we can't hear yeah. over here? Uh -oh. All right, so this is what I, yeah. so this is what it's gonna say. Action that is necessary to authorize the use of take home vehicles to include only the following positions police chief, police captain, police lieutenant, police investigator, K 9 unit, school resource officer, street superintendent, assistant street superintendent, fire inspector, fire chief, and all for and all these should be approved vehicles or approved take home vehicles. Effective October 1, 2024. Ah. I look out shop superintendent. Okay, so modification at the beginning would be approved take home. Mm. What about the show? I mean, we're leaving certain department heads out. I just don't think it's fair. We add, um, add, uh, goodness gracious, building and services department head in there. I don't, think, names. I don't think so. No, I, I'm, good. I'm good with what we've got right here. Because in my mind, uh, Harmony, correct me if I'm wrong, if we do that, say we add police uh, building and services to the department head, you at least have one person you know that can go before work, after work to right. address correct. a certain matter. The contractors make their hours, we cater to their hours. Right. But you, if you have one person, say say you don't have to take home guard, but right. Mike does, then that makes sense. At least it's covered around, so we can make sure this is his <clears throat> That was my fault. And he said that Mike has had to go out on the weekend when the police went or, to the um, same, yeah, yeah like to cut utilities. Like fire sometimes, like yeah. was, you know, structural collapse situations. I mean, he's come out. I know there was a place in my district that he came out on a Sunday to I have can to speak to that too. Anytime we have a vehicle versus a building accident where, where a car wrecks and hits a, hits a building and there's any kind of structural instability, he's one of the first people I call 
you know, especially if it's a, a commercial building, which oftentimes they wind up being, it's just how the mm -hmm. cookie crumbles. You know, we, we have to call them out there to make sure it's still safe for, for the public to be in the building. Just like, you know, what happened with Arby's and Giovanni's. Yeah. So. Okay. What's, what's your word you say? So it says action that is necessary to authorize or approve take home to it was to include. Approve. Yeah. Did you so get it out? No, sir. All right. I can't hear anything y'all are saying. Really? Really. Just you. I'm sorry. Um, just you. I, I oh, sorry. Right. All right. So action that is necessary to authorize the use of approved take home is to include only the following positions. And what we added was fire inspector and fire chief. So okay. the cars need to be, which take home vehicles need to be approved. You guys are them for the meeting minutes? Um, please, what do you think, Chip? Yeah. And also, too, I, was, I think we need to know, like, who's assigned what as well. So once we get a list of who's already assigned what, and then we need to know who's going to get assigned. We can approve based on the department of information. Yeah, well, I'm telling I can't get on board with the command center at all. I don't know how y'all feel. Yeah. Um, does the does the building services department, for example, have a vehicle, or is that the vehicle that Mike drives? Um, we have two vehicles. I don't know how that's up. We have to ask Mike that. I just know he has a vehicle that he drives, and there's a separate vehicle that I drive to my institution that I go to. So go with me here. In cases where there is an occasional need mm -hmm. for use by an employee of a vehicle to meet a contractor early or something, rather than have a permanent take home vehicle, wouldn't it be possible for the employee to check out the department vehicle, a department vehicle to use for a meeting the next morning or for some scheduled weekend something where it's not a permanent take home, it's an as needed take home? I think, but I think you were saying you wouldn't know when you would need it. Isn't that what you just said? Sometimes, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Like I said, it just depends on what the weather is going to happen, the money cash flows, supply chains, stuff like that. We don't necessarily know. Sometimes we know, sometimes we don't. So it just depends on what the weather is going to happen. You know, sometimes we don't. So sometimes we can get a call at like 3:30 in the afternoon. Hey, we want to fill concrete at five the next morning. And so you can just check out the vehicle, take well, it home, and start the next morning. Does that make sense to you? So that could be a separate policy, or if necessary, or just an assumption that there's a department vehicle that can be checked out by employees as necessary as authorized by the department head. But it's not an everyday take home. But it's home. not an everyday take home. So that ain't a bad idea. Now, if you want to go into that too, we can talk about Why would you get? Should be overtime. Why would you overtime. need overtime instead of? Why wouldn't it be overtime? I don't know. I don't know. She, she would get overtime if she comes. Yeah, over it should. I mean, if you, if you work the hours. I'm just saying, like, if we, you know, if that's something that happens, you know, I don't know how it works. So are you not? Are you not being paid now when you go in early or late? When you work late, are you not being on the clock? Are you not being compensated for your time now? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying I'm just saying I don't know what. There's, you just get overtime. If it's over the hours, you get paid, you're on the clock. Is there also a reason that we might want to consider for the, for the magistrate having access to a city vehicle to transport rather than having to use a personal vehicle I don't think she does. I think Amber uses a city vehicle to transport. They don't transport in their own okay, car. But anytime okay. she uses her own car for anything, to she get has into, to, to get into yeah. position. Got, she got makes it, sure she it. just turn in her mileage so yeah. she's compensated for her, her time got and her it. gas. Yeah. No, she, but I'm no, just, no, it doesn't have to transport. Transport. Mm -hmm. 
Do you, she's not transporting inmates. She's yeah. having to go up there she's and she does. Okay. But what are you saying? Hearing. If, it was, if she was to have to, nobody's going to transport anybody in their own car. But she's still putting wear and tear and mileage on hers to go for, back for and forth. Yeah, that's what mileage is for. It compensates you for your time, your gas, and the wear and tear in your car. Okay, so are we good to um, end the work session now? Yep. All right, so we're going to end the work session and we're going to start the, um, we're going to call the meeting to order at 6 p.m. Do a roll call vote. Laura Brawler Heath. Here. Lee Perryman. Here. Nate Brewer. Here. Nate um, Ashton Fowler. Here. All here. Invocation was provided by Ron Coleman and will stand for the pledge of allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. update on our vacancies throughout the city. Administrative finance has one vacancy. The animal shelter does not have any vacancies. Building service does not have any vacancies. Municipal court has one vacancy and the fire department has two. Chief, I think you said you had three, didn't you? So I have three. Get this thing open. Uh, police department, you're showing seven. Sure. Street department still has three vacancies. And the shop department has one vacancy. All these positions are being advertised for. Uh, over the weekend, uh, those of you who passed uh, Noble Park, uh, Kim told me they had uh, some pretty close to 300 people in the park camping out for the Ben Hody Trail. Mm -hmm. And from the tower all the way to the Ben Hody Trail, there's almost 3,000 people who took part in that. And also this coming weekend, we got uh, the Talladega race coming up, so the police will be kind of busy. And also, both Jangles opened up today. And we wanted to thank them. They came. The Board of Education, $2,500 check. They will be an asset to our community, and I hope that you all will take the time to visit them. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Arnold. I had a motion to amend or adopt the agenda. I make a motion. I have a second. Second. All in favor? Yes. Yeah. Any nays? Also, to I think number nine was taken off, right? Under new business number nine on the agenda? Yep. All right. And so we're going to. And you changed the uh, yeah. number 18. So should we have amended it? That's okay because it wasn't adopted until you just adopted it. Okay. So. All right. Sounds good. All right. Next item on the agenda. I need a, um, I need a motion to approve the minutes um, of the special work session held September 9, 2024. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Any nays? Next item, I need a motion to approve the minutes of the special work session held September 11, 2024. I have something I want to add to that. It said that Philip Morris was here and addressed the council, and he was not. In the minutes of that? Yes, they did. On the 11th? Yes. <clears throat> Is that the very bottom? I think we're going to have to amend those minutes. All right, so just make sure it's on the set on the October 17th uh, meeting. Mm -hmm. So this is moved. 17, 17. Thanks, Laura. Sure. All right. No more old business. We're on to new business. Again, we removed number nine. 
to number 10, action that is necessary to approve resolution number 100-2024, purchasing procedures and rescind resolution number 2-98, purchasing, purchasing policy, city clerk training to read resolution number 100-2024 into the meeting minutes. Nothing changed, just told me to read it. Okay, so you guys have, um, we're good with her not reading it. Mm -hmm. All right, I have a motion to approve. Motion. I have a second. Second. All in favor? Yeah. Any nays? Number 11, action that is necessary to approve resolution number 107-2024 to amend resolution number 66-2024, adjust comp compensation amount for Austin Smith, public defender for the municipal court, city clerk chosen to read resolution number 107-2024 into the meeting minutes if there's anything additional to add. Nothing changed. I have a motion to approve. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Yay. Any nays? Next item, action that is necessary to approve resolution number 111-2024, fiscal year 25, Coosa Valley Medical Center funding tolling $520,755, includes $25,000 for construction modification to the existing space to be reimbursed from the general fund. City Clerk Treasurer to read resolution number 111-2024 into the meeting minutes if there's anything to add. Nothing to change. I need a motion to approve. Motion. I heard it first. Second. Second. Nate Brewer. All in favor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any nays? Action that is necessary to approve resolution number 115-2024 to amend resolution number 85-2020 to adjust compensation amount for Dean McConaughey. Public Defender for the Municipal Court, City Clerk Treasurer to read resolution number 115-2024 into the meeting minutes if there's anything additional to add. I need a motion to approve. Motion. I need a second. Second. All in favor? Yeah. Yay. Any nays? Okay, approved. Action that is necessary to approve resolution number 117-2024 to amend resolution number 08. 2021 to adjust compensation amount for Matt West, City Prosecuting Attorney for the Municipal Court, City Clerk Treasurer to read resolution number 117-2024 into the meeting minutes. If there's anything to add. I need a motion to approve. Motion for Laura. Second. Second. Ashton. All in favor? Yeah. Any nays? Approved. Next item, action that is necessary to approve resolution number 129-2024 to amend resolution number 32-2023 to adjust compensation amount for Taylor A. Farr, part-time presiding municipal judge for the municipal court, city clerk treasurer to read resolution number 129-224 into the meeting minutes if there's anything additional to add. Okay, I need a motion to approve. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Yeah. Next item on the agenda, action that is necessary to approve resolution number 130-2024, authorizing a public hearing for rezoning 3209 and 3211 Talladega Highway from MX2 dash limited mixed use district to B2 dash general business district on November 7, 2024. City Clerk Treasurer to read resolution number 130-2024 into the meeting minutes. Is there anything additional to add to this out? I have a motion to approve. Motion. Second. Second. All right, Ashley first. All in favor? Yay. Any nays? Next item, action that is necessary to approve resolution number 131-2024, authorizing a public hearing for rezoning of property located on Poly Road owned by Josh Taylor from AG2 General Agriculture District to RT1-0 Lot Line Residential District. On November 7, 2024, City Clerk Treasurer to read resolution number 131-2024 into meeting minutes if there's anything additional to add. I have a motion to approve. Motion. Motion, Lord? Yes, sorry. Okay, second. Second. Action. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Any nays? Action that is necessary to approve resolution number 132-2024 established uniform guidelines for the city of Sylacauga and to rescind resolution number 14-2020 authorized work boots to be added as a part of the uniform required to be worn by street and shop department workers. City clerk treasurer to read resolution number 132-2024 into the meeting minutes if there's anything additional to add. Okay, I need a motion to approve. Motion. Second. 
All in favor? Yay. Any nays? Next item, action that is necessary to approve resolution number 134-2024 to rescind resolution number 30-2020, authorized summonses in lieu of arrest in accordance with the fourth supplemental state of emergency proclamation issued by Governor Kay Ivey on March 26, 2020, city clerk treasury resolution number 134-2024 into the main minutes. I need a motion? Motion. Second? Second. I heard Lee. All in favor? Yay. Any nays? Next item, action that is necessary to approve resolution number 135-2024 to amend resolution number 75-2024, contract for agriculture and engineering services with William Blackstock Architects for the Silicon Recreation and Aquatic Center to include additional design services for the City of Silicon's old municipal pool redevelopment. City Clerk Treasure to read resolution number 135-2024 into the meeting minutes if there's anything additional to add. Mm -hmm. I need a motion to approve. Motion. Any second? Second. All in favor? Yeah. Any nays? Next item, action that is necessary to approve resolution number 136-2024 to, to declare one Glock Model 17 firearm as surplus property to present to retiring officer as a token of the City of Silicon's appreciation for their faithful service. City Clerk Treasury to read resolution number 136-2024 into the meeting minutes if there's anything additional to add. Amen. I need a motion to approve. Motion. I need a second. Second. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Any nays? Next item, action that is necessary to approve resolution number 137-2024 for the police department to purchase four 2024 Ford F-150 Super Crew 4x4s totaling $370,829.08. Price includes equipment to be paid from Capital Reserve Improvement Fund. I need it to consider at this meeting item number 137-2024-2024-2024-2024-2024-2024-2024-2024-2024-2024-2024-2024-2024-2024-2024-2024-2024-2024-2024-2024-2024-2024-2024-2024-2024-2024-2024-2024-2024-2024-2024-2024-2024
Fire Inspector and Fire Chief, effective October 1st, 2024. Did I cover everything? Yep. I need a motion to approve. Motion. Motion. Okay, first. Second. Second. All in favor? Yay. Yeah. Any nays? Okay. And the next item, action that is necessary to accept Mayor's high school re recommendation to appoint Rundell Muse as police chief effective October 1, 2024 at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. at a grade of PDH step 11. I had a motion by a council member. Mr. Chairman, if I may, let it be known for the record that I did not have a vote in this. It is completely the council under the Alabama State Constitution. I cannot vote for a police chief. Okay, okay. we know you don't vote, but this is yeah, your recommendation, correct? That's right. Correct, Mayor? This Ma is your recommendation, correct? The recommendation was there. Okay. All right. But I the way it was worded, it sounded like that. You're taking my word for it. But anyway, I do not have a vote. That's the main thing. Okay, but this is your recommendation, right, it Mayor? Is. All right, I have a motion to approve. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Yay. Any nays? Any nays? One. Is there any nays? One nay. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. So um, all yays, one no. Four yays, one nay. Lord, no. Lord, no. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Next item, action that is necessary to approve Sylacauga Parks and Recreation to host various events at the various parks and waive the $50 special event license fee for fiscal year 25. Any motion to approve? Motion. Motion. All right, first. Hang a second. Second. All in favor? Yeah. Now, will our business license clerk know this? Because after the Pinotti Fest last week, it was not related to him that those people had this. We, I want to make sure that he's aware when we we, we talked to them, correct? Yeah, we talked He's to them. Aware. Well, he went, like, he didn't know. He wasn't aware about the blanket, like, that we... Well, oh, we don't give it to them. This is just for yeah. our people that we give appropriations to, like the park and rec, the school, the no, art. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is just park and rec people. Yes. Right. That is to yeah. make sure that he's yeah. aware of it. Yeah. But they, they're not included in this. Yeah, that's what I was saying. But the Penholdy people came and addressed us, and we explained this to them. Correct. Correct. I thought the business license is aware. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let me make sure. What you get right here on 28? Um, on 28, we got um, all yates, right? I got um, Lee first, Nate second, all yates. Yep. Okay. Any nays? Okay. Hold on. All right. Now it's time for anyone to address the city council. No action will be taken at this meeting. Please come to the microphone and state your name and address for the record prior to addressing the council. If there are certain groups that are representing or speaking on the same subject, we ask that you pick a representative to speak on your behalf. So is there anyone who would like to come and address the council at this time? Hello. My name is Carla Edwards. I reside at Skipper Hill Lane in Sylacauga. Um, Ms. Heath is my representative. Um, I came to the, um, initially to talk about one thing, but I want to talk about one other thing. I came to the fire department yesterday and I was inquiring about fires. I wanted to know if I have a barrel and I smell smoke and I see smoke, but I don't see a fire, is there really a fire there? And yes, there is. There's a reason why you have so many job vacancies. Okay, I used to work for the city clerk's office here. We started with eight people. Do you know how many are still there now? One. One. The police department has 13 cars, and Mr. Heichel said on Jimmy Dow's show that he wanted every police officer to eventually have a take-home car because that was a great incentive for the police department. And I don't disapprove with that or, or one way or the other, but does the general public know that the city pays for their gas, the shop to people to do their oil, and wherever else they go. Okay, and those vehicles are on the road every day, all day. So it's not like your general vehicle that just gets, you know, 40 or 50,000 miles on it. I mean, it has a lot of miles on it. That's why you have to buy them so quickly because they run up a lot of miles every single day. But I feel like I'm on the Oprah Winfrey show because you get a car and you get a car, but you don't get a car and you get an allowance, but you don't get an allowance. It's crazy. If y'all are going to have a policy, have it all the way across the board. 
Because when I worked for the city clerk's office, Patricia Carden went to the mailbox and she went to the bank. Kim Morris went to the mailbox and she went to the bank. And I'm sorry, Alex, I don't mean to be ugly to you, but you get a $250 hey, cycling Carla, and you told Carla, us. Can we, can we just not speak to the employees directly? You can okay, tell okay, me what you want to say. Let's just not call anybody Okay, that's fine. That's okay. But we were told June of last year that we couldn't take our personal vehicles to the mailbox anymore because I went at 445 every day because I never took a lunch. So I went at 445 to mail those checks that I made every week. Every day, we were directed and told we could take a city vehicle to the bank or to the post office. So then why does the city clerk get a $250 stipend to do that when she doesn't take her vehicle? I know because I took it. Now let me tell you about the vehicle that I took. I took it twice. I took the small F-150 and I took the little bitty one. I took the big one and the little one. Both of them broke down on me. I had a dress on and high heel shoes. It broke down on me in the middle of the road. Well, call Ed Ford, it's a running joke. It was in the city clerk's office at one point. Well, I don't think Portia Ford's here. It was a running joke that every time she got in the thing, it broke down. The last time I drove it, it had a wasp nest in the gas tank. Now, explain to me how it is that you're fair across the board, but you give your court clerk 63 cents to go to Talladega for domestic violence hearings and for the weekends and whenever she has to go or any other body else has to go there on holidays. Then yes, they get overtime break, but they get 63 cents a mile. They don't get $250 a day or a month, excuse me, month. You got some department heads that have to pay money out of their pocket to take a department vehicle home. Y'all didn't even know that the business license clerk didn't have a vehicle. She had to take her own personal vehicle out when she went to go get business licenses because a lot of times she'd go out before she was supposed to be at work. But you weren't, weren't, you're not worried about them. So are you fair or are you not? Because the way I'm looking at it, you, y'all don't you get, look, my kids act better than y'all do. I'm not being ugly, but y'all have set up here. You don't even know what your department people do. You didn't even know that building services has to come in sometimes at five o'clock because if you've got contractors and it's going to rain, they can't pour concrete in the rain. Okay, well, Carla, that's your five minutes. So we appreciate you for coming out thank and you. thank you for your time. It's yes, great to see you. All right, is there anyone else who would like to address the council? Okay. Have an old. Further business to discuss? I need a motion to adjourn. Oh, but we're gonna do it. We're not. Gonna, are we gonna do it during the council meeting? So we're gonna do it. Okay. Well, hold on. So we are gonna um, swear in our new police chief during the council meeting. So we're gonna hold off before we do that. I do apologize. You ready? <clears throat> That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend the laws of the Constitution of the United States. The laws of the Constitution of the United States. And the laws and Constitution of the State of Alabama. And the laws of the State of Alabama. The of the State of Alabama. And the ordinances of the City of Sylacauga. And the ordinances of the City of Sylacauga. So long as I continue a citizen thereof. And so long as I continue a citizen thereof. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. And honestly. And honestly. Discharge the duties. A police chief, a police chief of the city of Sylacauga, of the city of Sylacauga, to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. All right. Just rip it off. We'll buy the new shirt. Yeah. They have to. <laughs> you want to kiss it goodbye? <laughs> I'll let you hold it then. Don't 
I'm sticking, man. <laughs> I'll wait for him to holler. <laughs> Ow. There it goes. Chief, you got two holes in here and that other one's hard to find. Uh -huh. We're going to find it. How long does it take you to get dressed in Class A uniform? <laughs> yeah, I believe it does. You put the badge on before you put the shirt on. I know what you're doing. Yeah. You want to take your shirt off, we'll do this. <laughs> no, scare nobody. <laughs> oh, you probably got a great physique. Got Chief, look at it. Where's that slit? Right there. You feel it? We both got a hand in this one. There it goes. There you go. Uh -huh. I left it open for you. Just snap it in there. There we go. Congratulations.